This experiment, we are testing the effects of different antibiotics on uh, different bacteria. We're going to have two plates. One will be inoculated with a gram-positive bacteria, which is Staphylococcus aureus. The other one will be inoculated with a gram-negative organism. We will use E. coli. And as I said, we will test the effects of different antibiotics on them. The cultures have been grown in a liquid medium. So what we're going to do, flame the loop. We have a cotton-tipped <clears throat> applicator. Basically looks like a fancy Q-tip. I'm just going to dip it into the tube, just very gently, squeeze off excess, flame our tube, put the tube aside. On the plate, I want to get nice, solid growth across the entire plate. So the way we're going to do this is just spread the tip of the cotton tip applicator. First you go in one direction, then you go in another. You just want to have complete coverage across this plate. And then at the end you swirl around the plate like this. Once again, you don't want isolated columns. You want what we call a lawn. It's a complete coverage on the plate. When I'm done with this applicator, I'm going to stick it back into this paper sleeve for disposal into the biohazard container. And then I have the second plate. As I said, it is with Staphylococcus aureus. Oftentimes with liquid cultures, if they've been sitting for a while, it tends to precipitate kind of down at the bottom. So you want to just kind of shake the tube up a little bit. I will do the same thing with this culture as I did with the other one. Lame the tube, remove the cotton tip applicator. We're kind of pressed to get off the excess fluid. Lame our tube, cap it. And once again on this plate, just like the other one, I want to get a nice, like I say, it's called a lawn. It's just complete solid growth. So you just go in multiple directions. You can turn the plate if you wish. And then around the edge like this. So now that the plates are inoculated and they have been previously um, labeled on the bottom. We're going to arrange five different antibiotics on this. I'm using vancomycin, bacitracin, tetracycline, erythromycin, and penicillin. Uh, some places have little dispensers for these. We're just going to use the tried and true method of getting the disc. When you do this, on the side of the tube, on the label, there will be the name and the code number. Make sure you write that down so you know which one you are working with. So this one is base of tracing. You're just going to put it on the plate and just gently tap it. Don't smush it down, just gently tap it. We're going to use the same antibiotics on each plate so that we can compare the gram positive to the gram negative. These discs have been pre-soaked or impregnated with the antibiotic at a certain concentration. That's what the 10 number is for. Um, like this one says uh, 15 on it. It's usually referring to micrograms. So what happens is the antibiotic will diffuse out from the disc into the medium and it may end up um, diffusing in there and because we've already inoculated it, it will, the plate, it will inhibit possibly the growth of the bacteria on that plate. So we'll just do this with all of them. Okay, so now that we have all of the disc on here, like I say, you might want to just gently tap so that when you invert the plate, they don't fall off. And then we will incubate these. 
when we check on them afterwards, we will see the effects of the various antibiotics on the two different organisms. We'll incubate this at 37 degrees. The two plates we have here, this one over here is E. coli, which is gram negative. And over here we have Staphylococcus aureus, which is a gram positive. So you're going to see the differences between gram positive and gram negative and how effective the antibiotics are. Some antibiotics work on the cell wall, and because of the differences in the chemical compositions of the cell wall between gram positive and gram negative, you see differences in the effectiveness of the antibiotics. Now we're going to go around the circle and look at this. What you're looking for, you have these discs which had been pre-soaked with the antibiotic at certain concentrations. You're looking for this zone of inhibition. So when I talk about a zone of inhibition, if you can see here, you're looking at this area where there is no growth. Why? Because the antibiotic diffused out of the disc into the median. And we had inoculated the plates initially to get a full, nice, long, full, heavy growth of the bacteria. But it cannot grow in this area because this particular antibiotic is inhibiting. Oftentimes what you're doing when you're comparing different antibiotics is seeing is there a zone and then comparing between the different antibiotics if there is a zone, how do they compare to each other and you can actually measure. If you look at the Staphylococcus aureus, we tested five different antibiotics. All five were inhibitory. Now if you look over here at this one, which is penicillin, we can actually measure from the edge of the disc to the edge of that zone. And it looks to be about 12 to 13 millimeters as compared to over here, the VA's vancomycin, and that's about three millimeters in as distance of the zone of inhibition. So the greater the zone, the greater the effectiveness. Now, if we look at the various antibiotics and we compare between the two, starting over here, this is basotracin. It was inhibitory to Staphylococcus aureus, but not E. coli. This is vancomycin. Once again, was inhibitory to the Staph aureus, but not to the E. coli. Penicillin was effective against Staph aureus, but not against the E. coli. Uh, tetracycline was effective against both gram, uh, the gram positive and gram negative, so that would be considered or classified as a broad spectrum. It is um, effective against multiple different types of bacteria, whether it's gram positive or gram negative. And then up here we have erythromycin. So for the gram negative, the only one that was inhibitory was that tetracycline. Over on the gram positive, once again, all five of them were. If you had to rate these, the most effective would be the penicillin. Then it looks like tetracycline, erythromycin, basotracin, and then finally vancomycin.